Hello everyone. Welcome to our pre-reading video on William Faulkner's Dry September. Uh, this is one of my favorite works by Faulkner, um, primarily because it's very short uh, compared to some of his other works. Dry September is a very short, short story, but it packs a punch. Uh, let's take a look at some things here. First, some opening reflection questions, and uh, I'd like to uh, ask that you keep an open mind. Uh, Dry September deals with some heavy themes, and so uh, we have some heavy questions here. When in your life have you felt most violent or volatile? In what circumstances have you, quote unquote, lost control, however you define this for yourself. Where or when do you feel prejudice meets personality? Uh, what motivates individuals and what motivates groups? And how are these things different? Uh, I'd like to think briefly about this. Uh, it might seem like a strange question, but just for a moment, focus on the difference between prejudice and personality, and then think about how motivation operates uh, in these circumstances. Third, how are humans connected to the natural world? Uh, when do you find yourself most affected or impacted by the natural world around you? Um, nature, capital N, uh, the natural world, uh, is something we should think about very often uh, because it affects our daily lives. We are natural beings. So take a moment to think about this question. Okay. Dry September is about murder. You might have seen this before. And whenever there is murder, uh, we try to think about the truth. You know, what is the truth? And where does justice come from? Uh, because murder is inherently, uh, it is some type of uh, balance going wrong, right? Something hangs in the balance uh, whenever uh, there is a crime, a murder. Now, these issues are closely related, as they always are, to women and society. Um, you might recognize this slide if you uh, read trifles with me, but I want to build on this question here in a different circumstance. Um, what about men? Uh, it is a very interesting question and a difficult one, but I hope we can talk about it together. Let's talk about William Faulkner, uh, Nobel laureate in literature, uh, born in 1897, passed away in 1962, best known uh, for his uh, fiction work, uh, for his stories of the South, of the American Deep South uh, in Mississippi. Where is the Deep South? Well, if we think about American geography, anything that is uh, starting from Virginia down, let me use my cursor here, Virginia below uh, is considered the South. Uh, the Deep South would be here, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, uh, and we are set here uh, in Mississippi. And that is where uh, most of Faulkner's work uh, is set. That's where he is from, um, the Deep South. Some notes on historical context. Uh, 1931, when the uh, short story was published, uh, we are in the era of the Great Depression, not just in America, but everywhere in the world, uh, after the First World War. Uh, after the Roaring Twenties, uh, if you remember, um, works like uh, Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby, 1920s, uh, we are now in uh, the Great Depression, 1930s. Uh, this is a time, of course, uh, of segregation. Uh, in America, uh, even though slavery was abolished in the 1860s, uh, there was a great deal of, of uh, racial animosity that still existed, that still exists, 
Uh, and this uh, is infamously the time of the Jim Crow laws. And it wouldn't be until the 1960s that the civil rights movement would pick up again. A lot of violence uh, to the point of lynching. Uh, if you've heard of the lynch laws, uh, African Americans, a really terrible time, uh, including, of course, the Ku Klux Klan or the KKK. Uh, and uh, remember this uh, geographical social setting. Uh, Mississippi in the Deep South uh, was uh, a confederate state. Uh, and it's set in a small town, not in the big city. And so uh, what is something special about a small town? Uh, a small town is a place actually where everybody knows everything about everybody else. Uh, this is a quote that a friend of mine uh, used to quote to me, who grew up in a small town uh, in America. Um, it's a place where everybody is in everyone else's business, you know, uh, when neighbors know each other. And uh, the ecosystem uh, of this small society exists by itself, right? It's almost in a way in isolation. And so any kind of change in the social situation can set off uh, a bigger change around it. Uh, in ways that are very different from a big city. Uh, in a small town, let me say it again, quote, everybody knows everything about everybody else. And you can imagine that living in an environment like this is actually quite stifling. Uh, it's actually quite difficult. Okay. Uh, Mississippi is really hot, as you can imagine, uh, but it's normally not too dry. Uh, and so the setting in which we uh, open our story, dry September, two months of drought. Uh, that's considered not normal, um, but uh, the heat is, is quite normal uh, this time. So uh, remember this, uh, climate hot, but it shouldn't be as dry as it is uh, in the short story. I want to leave you, before we dive deeper into the story, I want to leave you with an image to keep in your mind. I don't want to say too much about it yet, um, but I want to show it to you and we'll meditate for a moment uh, on this painting by Henry Osawa Tanner, uh, one of my favorites. Uh, just take a look. Take a closer look. Now take a look at the title and the date. We'll return to this image towards the end of our discussions. So Dry September is set in a small town. So. Remember the scene that we just saw in the banjo lesson? Uh, this is a photograph taken in the 19 teens, around 1910, uh, not in the Deep South, um, but in a small town that is probably very similar. Uh, this was taken in Nebraska, uh, in the Midwest. But there are some distinct features that we can still imagine uh, were similar in the 1930s. Uh, the dirt road, for example, the main road, uh, small town where people depend upon each other uh, and everybody knows each other and is in each other's business. Think about this um, environment as a place that uh, can be really welcoming to a stranger, but it is also very suspicious of change. Uh, think about this uh, environment as uh, in some sense, forgotten in history, that is slow to change its ways. And imagine this setting as we enter into the barber shop of Dry September. Please enjoy our journey into rural America, deep down south. I look forward to our next discussion. Enjoy the story. Thank you all very much.